Hey everybody, MacArthur here with another episode of Inner Peace for Nerds. Now some of you might have been wondering, why would I spend one minute of my time thinking about philosophy when I could be playing video games, making music, or laughing at my own jokes? Well, I figured I would use this opportunity to explain myself. I am interested in philosophy for two very good reasons. Number one, I don't like pain, any kind of pain. Emotional, physical, psychological, I don't like any of it. I don't even particularly care for discomfort, for that matter. So, naturally, I want to experience as little of these things as possible, and maybe even enjoy myself on occasion. Reason number two, I'm kinda lazy. Okay, I'm really lazy. And because of this, I'm very concerned with efficiency. I want to accomplish goal number one with the smallest amount of time and energy possible, so I can get back to wasting time. As strange as it sounds, I find philosophy to be the most efficient way to accomplish these goals, and if we share either of the above traits, perhaps you'd like philosophy more than you think. Here's why. Life is vast, complex, mysterious, and of course, difficult. We have very little control over the world around us, and therefore some pain is of course inevitable. However, a great deal of it can be avoided, and who knows, maybe we'll find some treasure along the way. My father used to say that life was a lot like a game of poker, and that if we got good at poker, we'd probably be good at life. So let's use his analogy to explain. Every time we make a decision in our daily lives, it's a lot like placing a bet on a poker table. We're gambling, essentially, on a certain outcome. Unfortunately, we have no control over what cards we are dealt, and we can't see most of them. To make matters even more complex, we also don't know what cards the other players are holding, or what they might do with them. However, one thing is certain. Whatever cards were dealt, and whatever the other players do, the only real control we have is how we play our own hand. It sounds like there's a great deal of luck and chance involved in this game, but if that's the case, why do some people always seem to win, even though we're all playing by the same rules? That's because if used at the right time in just the right way, the tiny amount of control we do have in this game is enough to win more often than not. This is known as skill which is usually demonstrated as the correct application of knowledge to reality. Well, of course, when we witness skill, we naturally think, hey, I want some of that. How do I get myself some of this skill? Well, the way we get skill is by learning the game, of course, by learning what cards are in the deck, which combinations are valuable and how likely they are to appear. Also, by learning about other people and how they are likely to react to certain situations. And perhaps most importantly, by examining our own behavior and observing how it influences all of these variables. This knowledge is precisely what tells a good player when to bet and when to fold. And although they might lose many hands in a row, they usually walk away from the table a winner at the end of the game. Because I'm a lazy bastard, I'm inclined to ask the question, if skill depends on our knowledge of the game, then what's the fastest and easiest way to gain that knowledge? Well, by watching the masters, of course. By observing their actions, listening to their advice, and even better, by playing with them. In the game of life, however, we don't need to seek out a famous poker champion that won a million dollar prize and beg them to take us in as their personal apprentice because, fortunately, life has been around a lot longer than poker, and people have been thinking about it, writing about it, and slowly mastering it for a very long time. If we want access to that wisdom, we need look no farther than philosophy. It's where we find information on the repeating patterns and cycles that affect the most important parts of our lives, from our relationships to our careers, to our happiness and our health. It's like a map that can show us the location of all of the obstacles, the challenges, the traps, and the dangerous rocks lurking beneath the waters of life. But for those of us willing to look, it can also lead us to treasures beyond our wildest dreams. 
The word philosophy itself literally means a love of wisdom, but could be described simply as the study of life itself, and the attempt to understand and describe it as accurately as possible. What we human beings experience as life is made up of three parts. Three different aspects of the game that we should probably learn if we don't want to be hot messes for the rest of our lives. And philosophy tackles them all. The most apparent, of course, is the world around us. The part of life that we can see and touch, measure and maybe even manipulate. We learn this part of the game through studies like physics, astronomy, biology, and evolution. A certain degree of expertise in this field is pretty important for obvious reasons. Otherwise, we would still be running around touching hot stoves and sticking butter knives in light sockets. Now, a little more tricky is the world within us. That is to say, the world we create in our own minds with our thoughts and perceptions. Now, putting a few skill points in this department is absolutely vital, because the more you know about how people think, including yourself, the more you will be able to predict human behavior, which I'm sure you'll agree is a pretty handy skill to have in just about any game. To level up in this department, we can use tools like psychology, anthropology, sociology, and even the arts. Finally, we must also contend with the world beyond us. This represents the great unknown, and everything in life that we don't understand and possibly never will. Although this part of the game is mostly hidden from us, much like the deck of cards in poker, we can still learn a great deal about its natural laws and its patterns of behavior through mythology, religion, metaphysics, and even the occult. This is an important part of the game of life for a couple of good reasons. Most importantly, I think, is that a good portion of human suffering is linked with the unknown. For example, emotional conditions such as anxiety are often described simply as a fear of the future, but the future is only scary because it is unknown. Another reason why it's a good idea to level up in this department is because we're going to face this aspect of the game eventually. For example, we're all going to be faced with the big questions sooner or later, such as our own mortality and the meaning of life. And if we wait until the end of our lives to look at this stuff, the possibility of unnecessary discomfort is very real, and you all know how I feel about that. Since no one has the time to become experts on all of these fields, it's a damn good thing we don't have to in order to find what we're looking for, which in my case, is whatever part that tells me how to get less suckage and more awesomeness out of life, how to experience less pain and more pleasure, less anxiety and more peace, less depression and more happiness. As many of us are painfully aware by this point in history, some of these philosophies are at odds with each other to say the least and disagree on just about everything. Luckily for us, the areas that we're concerned with today are the same areas in which these often opposing principles happen to agree for once. And you can be sure that when opposing ideas are forced to agree on something, you know you're probably getting close to the truth. And it's those areas of common ground that this series is all about. After all, anything else would simply be inefficient. And I suppose that brings me to the reasons why I continually harass you folks with all of this stuff as well. It is my great hope that somewhere out there, there's at least one person who is as lazy and unenthusiastic about pain as I am. And if I can save that one person years of time spent learning the hard way when they could be playing video games, I will consider it all time well spent. Well, if you are out there somewhere listening to this, stay tuned for the next episode when we begin looking at which philosophies can help us the most with the challenges of modern life, including stress, anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, uncertainty, and so much more. Until then, I would love to hear about your favorite philosophies in the comments section below. And if you're enjoying this content so far, please hit that subscribe button, because it lets me know that maybe there are other people out there that are just as weird as I am.